access yourself. Um, I'll add to the complications, if you don't mind me doing that. <laughs> All these allowances, they're brilliant. He, he's just spoken about rollover, holdover relief um, for self-employed going as in sole traders going into limited companies. Um, we've also spoken about the dividend allowances going down. Many of you, when I did my sessions, spoke to me about having your own investments and doing them yourself. Do you know those dividends count towards your annual dividends as well? So make sure you are speaking to Akshay and actually asking him how to make sure that allowances, uh, those allowances are counted as well. Um, the other thing that I really picked on is LISA. Um, LISAs can be invested. So I just thought I'll give sort of um, open. But remember, they become your children's money. They are not your monies anymore. So you have no control over it whatsoever. So if they want access to all of it, it's their money. So um, LISA can be invested through uh, <laughs> kind of proper yes. uh, channelized yeah. investments. They can be investments as well. So very similar to junior ISAs. So junior ISAs are ISAs for children under 18, which we build up, but government doesn't pay towards it. But whereas LISAs, government will start paying the 1,000 pounds. So if you put in 4,000, they'll pay 1,000 over it. If your child goes and buys a property, that becomes their money. or at 40, if they say, I've still not bought a property, I'm still living off my parents' property, or however, then that can then further on become, in a way, a pension. So you're saving to their pension. And you can yourself also manage that investment mm -hmm. rather than going through any... Yeah. Uh, yes. Absolutely. You can do it yourself. And um, one more, this LISA, the account name has to be child's yes. name or bank. You don't, second name or anything, you cannot put. It is not. <laughs> Just at least, at least the nominee. At least the nominee. That money is it if it's gone. You can sign a contract with your son or daughter. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'll look up things. Not going to happen. Not going to happen in today's world. In all honesty, it's not going to happen in today's world. You get that? It is what you want to do. Given it. Yeah, and then that money just keeps on. If they don't buy the property, also it will just accumulate. It will. That's it. Yeah. 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 We all are 18, we've got access to 10,000 pounds, what are we going to do? <laughs> That's just a thought to bear in mind. All our children are very responsible, we love them to bits, but just to keep in mind. But is it not that they won't be able to withdraw money just for spending? Uh, because they are supposed to be no. going for only yeah. well. That money, if they withdraw, can they withdraw? Yes, they can withdraw, but they'll lose the 1,000 pounds. Yeah. So the 4,000 pounds will become their money. Yeah. And this is where responsibility and understanding and tax allowances kicks in. Do they understand it all is a question. Some do, mm. honestly. Some, like mine, do But don't you think it's a good strategy to put them on uh, saving ladder very quickly? Absolutely. Saying that first two, three years will support and then after that you have Absolutely. to Absolutely. Mm. I think it's a brilliant tool and the government is thoroughly supporting it. Again, it's an allowance. It's all these allowances and that's where I think somebody like Akshay is excellent to have a brainstorming session once every... And the one thing I wrote down which I thought was key, key, key was one-to-ones. All of us have accountants, how many times do we pick up the phone and they say, uh, I'll send you an email. I think the important bit is one-to-one. -one. It's extremely important because we all know these allowances but utilizing them to our benefit, I think it's extremely important. Um, the point, the reason why I came up was um, pensions. I'm not going to talk about it a lot because I've done a whole two and a half hour session. I'm not going to do exactly the same again. Very quickly and briefly, we've talked about property quite a bit today. We've done a good session on property, all sorts of allowances, stamp duty, capital gains tax, everything. Just a thought to bear in everybody's mind, we have allowances from the government to use within our pensions. And remember, pensions can buy properties. For conglomerates, your properties can be rented back to your own. For example, I'm going to pick on somebody sat right at the <laughs> Bidesar. If your practice actually is rented back from your SIP, so your pension plan, you can actually claim double relief on that. So things like that can be done. There are lots of clever things. So think about it. That's all I'll say personally and talk to Akshay. Don't lose out on these allowances.